we can start. So welcome to the afternoon session. So this is Juan Vera from Tilburg University. And he talks about the simplex way to obtain non-negative coefficients over compact semi-algebraic sets. Uh, to obtain non-negative certificates, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you, Marcus. And uh, well, thank you for the invitation and thank you for all of you to, for being here and listening to me. I do prefer to have questions as I go. So if you have questions, just uh, interrupt me, please. Or I will try to give some space for questions uh, to, during my presentation. And the only thing is I don't see the questions in the chat. So I will need somebody to tell me if there is a question in the chat. Okay, so this is yeah, joint work with Luis. Tell you. Yeah, okay, thank you. So this is joint work with uh, Luis Zuluaga from Lehigh and Olga Kurjanitova, who used to be my PhD student, and now she is at uh, Rotterdam University. And the, the, what I want to talk today is about non-negative certificates. So, so what is a non-negative certificate? Um, I don't think I need to say this here, but I will say it. Well, it's just a way to write a function or, or let's say a polynomial such that its non-negativity is, is evident, yeah? So I bring a very simple example. So, uh, so my examples are just with one variable. So, so some things are not easy to see when they when it's one one variable, like the complexity. But, uh, but I had this polynomial, and then I want to know if, if this polynomial is non-negative in this set. Now, if I do the plot here in the left, you can see that well, the polynomial is non-negative, and and because the set is the red part, and then we can see the polynomial in blue. Now, of course, we all know that the plot might be misleading. And misleading. So, 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 so here I bring a proof. Actually, I bring two. I mean, I can write the polynomial in this way. So, so here all the all the black terms they are sum of squares, and the blue terms are just the equations defining the, the set S, the inequalities that are valid for the set S because they are actually the ones that define S, and therefore this expression uh, proves the non-negativity of P on S. Or I can also use this one, this, this second one, and well, this is uh, might look simpler, but you can see here I'm using products of the inequalities defining uh, the set S in this part here, and therefore, and therefore, um, well, it's, it's a little bit more complex, yeah, but and it's a different type of certificate. So here I'm using a product, and then and then the the question is. Uh, Okay, how, how can we produce this certification of negativity? And that's a question that it has been studied, uh, has been well studied. And and, uh, and for example, there is the theorem by Putinar. Yeah. And there is something I, I want to call classical certificates. I don't know if that's the right name, but I will call it classical at least for, for now, for, for this talk today. And, and for example, we have uh, the theorem of Putinar. So we have a, we're giving a semi algebraic set with some condition that is being uh, that the quadratic model is Archimedean. In particular, my set S has to be compact. Then, if I have a positive polynomial on S, then there are some of the squares such that this representation holds. And this theorem has been presented several times in, in, in this workshop. Yeah, it's it's uh, one of the main things in, in this workshop. And and uh, and and then the. The question is, where, what kind of other certificates can we produce? And then here I, I try to do the generic format of, 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 the, of the, what I call the classical certificates. So what we have usually is we have some assumption on S, and, and usually those assumptions imply that S is compact, or at least for now I only worry about the case when S is compact. Yeah? And then we have uh, putting our was about sigma being SOS, so we can change the condition of SOS. And uh, for a, some other kind of non-negative uh, condition, non-negativity. And then we can add here a denominator, yeah, that will be a positive polynomial. And we can also add more complex expressions with the HIs. We can add a degree, I mean, we can add products of the HIs in particular, we can add higher degrees of the HIs, yeah? And then for instance, we have the theorem Handelman that is for polytops. So we have a polytop here, so it's defined by linear inequalities and it's compact and it's non-empty. Then a polynomial that is positive on this polytope can be written as, as some of this type, where here the sigmas are asked to be only no negative constants, yeah, so no negative reals. And then here I have multiplications of the of the of the h. So I have multiplications of the polynomials defining my region. Yeah. So we can see we change the SOS condition by just being a non-negative scalar. And then we use products of, of, of the defining polynomials, and we are not using a denominator here. 
Okay, so that's another, so that falls into these classical certificates. Now, what kind of conditions can I use instead of SOS conditions? Well, there are several conditions of non-negativity that have been worked like in the last decade or two decades there. Several of them have appeared. And then well, we started with the SOS polynomials, some of the squares, and then there is the scale diagonal dominant and the diagonal dominant SOS. Yeah. And then also non, uh, polynomials with non-negative coefficients, or like the one in Handelman, and then representations using the SONC, and those are some of non-negative circuit polynomials, uh, or SAGE, that are the sums of AMIN and GM exponential, or also hyperbolic polynomials. We know that they are non-negative, therefore we can, we can use them to, to construct this type of representations, or also compositive polynomials, yeah? And then we have all these classes, and we're going to define them uh, and, and they are all interesting classes and there are a lot of study. I mean, we are right now, we are trying to understand all these classes and the different relationships between these classes. Okay. And this is what I want to call the, the classical certificates. So I think, uh, let me know if there is a, any question here, but this is what I have in mind when I, when I mention the classical certificates. So this, the, several theorems that are well-known theorems fall into this category. So what is the plant? Well, now I'm going to talk about what I call the novel approach. All this is in quote because, as I said, let's say these are names just for today. And I want to put novel just because it can offer this type of certificates and it's different. Yeah. And then I will go into, into the main topic of my talk. And then let's look at the same example. So I had this polynomial and now I, I, will, I will look at, at, a, at a different way of proving that, that P is non negative. So what I want to do first is I want to write X in this format. So I, I'm thinking of S as being a subset of, of just the, the interval minus one, one. And then I have certain constraint there. So I have this X squared minus one quarter has to be positive or non negative. Yeah. Now, if I take this polynomial, this F of X U, this polynomial is non negative on minus one, one cross zero one. So, so it's an F of X U that is non negative. And then the interesting property is, um, Somehow I deleted the interesting property. So I had to write it down. The interesting property here is that P of X actually, it says that I can't write, but. The interesting property is that P of X I don't know why I cannot know that. Well, the, the interesting property is that P of X is equal to F of X comma my, my constraint. The annotation, the tool is not working for me. So P of X is equal to F of X comma X squared minus a quarter. I don't know why the pen is not working. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the interesting property and that implies that P is not negative on S. Yeah, because we have this property that says that X square minus a quarter is between zero and one. And then this is the kind of new approach that, 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 I, that I want to, to present today. Yeah, I mean, new in quotes, and, but it's different from, from what I have called the classical approach. So the question is, if I give you P and I give you a set where S is just, I have some non-negative polynomials, if, um, some polynomials defined in S plus I constrain X to be in a region T, then can I find such chan f that will depend on more variables in these variables u, such that when I, I change, replace u by h of x, what I get is p of x. So p of x will be equal to f of x comma h of x. Notice that if this happens, and if, if I had picking the mi's big enough, this will imply that p of x is non-negative. So this will be a certificate of non-negativity. Okay? 
So, so I guess. Excuse me, Joan. Uh, could you please uh, um, remind us how F was actually defined? Capital F. I. I. I mean, F. Sorry, who? How how is capital F actually defined? I somehow missed this or forgot it already. I see it in the example, but uh, but what is in general? Oh, no, no. We don't. We we haven't defined F. So if I can find the question is whether I can find an F that is non negative. Yeah. Ah, okay. Because you wrote notice f is this. That's just one choice of f. That's possible. Yeah. Uh, for, so here, this f is one possible choice. And what I notice that what I notice is that it's non-negative on this set. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. What I'm noticing you. is that this polynomial, this particular polynomial, is non-negative. And when yes. I evaluate, when I do this replacement, that's the one that I I don't know why I deleted. It's not there. Yeah, then, then I get that uh, this is a certificate of no negativity for P. Yes, thank you. Okay. okay, yeah, so the question is whether I can build such certificate. Yeah, now there is a, a related result. And, and, and that is a, a theorem that we, that we did with, with uh, Javier Peña and Luis Zuluaga uh, some time ago. And it's about the case when we have equalities. So if, if my set S is define as the points in T that satisfy certain equalities, then I can find a certificate for non-negativity, this F. This F is non-negative on T, actually it's positive, yeah? And then I, I get this expression. Notice that here alpha is just a polynomial. I have, a, I have no restriction in alpha except for some degree restrictions. So I can find F and alpha such that this equation holds. And if this equation holds, that it automatically implies that T is non-negative on S. Yeah, because f is not negative on t, and all these h's are zero. This is for equality. So here I don't need to add more variables to, to, to I don't need to add the f of x u, it's just f of x. Yeah? And then we know that this holds uh, when we have equalities, and, and, uh, and then the, one of the important characteristics of this theorem, let's say, is that actually we have a bound on the degree. So here we know what is the, the degree or, or, or non-negative certificate. Yeah. Yeah, how to find that F or, or how to actually certificate that F is not negative on T, I'm not going to discuss it yet. So that's not, let's say, that's not at least important in the first part of the talk. So again, here with the F, we just ask whether there is an F that is positive with this condition. We are not saying that, that how to build that F. Yeah, I guess that goes to, to the question of Marcus. Okay, so 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 this is basically uh, it, this is a, a simplified version of our main result. So here I have S, it's just on semi-algebraic set, and then I have D max is this number defined according to the degrees of all my data, and then I have the simplex, and then this simplex is just non-negative orton and E transpose X. So this is the summation of uh, X size uh, so equal to M. And then m hat is just some constant that gets defined also with all my data, yeah? And then the, the theorem is if S is a subset of the simplex, so in particular if S is compact, yeah? And P is positive on S, then I can build this F. Or, well, I, I know that there is one, yeah? There is an F here that is positive in this larger simplex. Notice that this is a, in a higher dimension. I have my M variables, my N original variables, my plus M use. Yeah, and then the, the m hat is this constant here that is going to be larger than m in general. Yeah, and then I know that the degree is going to be this 2d max, where d max is this quantity defined here on top, such that p of x actually is equal to f of x, comma h of x. Yeah, and this is going to be a certificate of non-negativity for p on s. Yeah, and, and, and the reason is because m hat is big enough such that my h are bounded by, by this value. So when I replace here, this will imply for any x in S, I will have that the point x comma h of x is in this larger simplex. And therefore, this expression that I have here in, on the right-hand side is non-negative on x, yeah? And therefore, p of x is non-negative on x. Um, and yeah, so as I said, this is a simplified version. So we can write this version without assuming actually that S is a subset of the simplex. We can just say, well, if you have any compact set, you can always translate it by a change of variables such that it's inside the non-negative orton. And then you can decide, put M big enough such that your set is containing that simplex. So this assumption here about being containing a simplex 
holes, gen I mean, for any, basically holes with a loss in general. Yeah. And this also, we will write it here with simplexes. We can write it with boxes, balls, whatever you prefer. What you need is that somehow you move to a larger dimension. So you add some number of variables, and then you have a, you will have here a larger simplex. In the case of a box, you will move to more variables and you have a larger box. Or in balls also, you move to more variables, so higher dimension, and you will have a, a, a larger ball. But you can do it with boxes, balls, simplexes with very uh, many, many different classes of simple families of sets, okay? So I, I will actually give the proof of the theorem at the end, but I, uh, or actually I will give the proof because it's very simple, but I, I want to show some applications first. So I guess, uh, please, if it, if it is not understood what the theorem is saying, please uh, uh, let me know. And uh, so a, a key fact about this theorem is, well, first, the degree of F is, is known, is, I mean, the degree of F is bounded, so we are working all the time in, in finite dimension. And also like this point of view is amenable for optimization because it's based on analysis. Yeah, so we don't use really any algebraic geometry. Um, and then let me give you an, an example. And this is just a proof of the Putinar's theorem. Actually, I should mention that Marcus has a similar proof for Putinar's theorem, but here there are some essential differences. One of them is, for example, Marcus uses Polyas theorem. We don't use Polyas theorem. Yeah. So, so the first part will be, well, how, how do we apply this theorem? So here it says, if you want to prove non-negativity on S, yeah, you need to get some certificate that it, or non-negativity on the simplex. Yeah. So the way to use this theorem is, well, let's start by constructing some certificate non-negativity on the simplex. And then here the lemma that one has to prove first is the putting our holes for the simplex. So I have to prove Putinar on the simplex. Unless, let's, believe me that I have proven that. Actually, I, I will show you a proof in, in, in a couple of slides later. Now, the, the, the main theorem, then I can apply it. And then if P is positive on S, then I know that P of X minus L, and this S minus L is because I'm translating here to make it into a simplex. Yeah, so I'm putting S with some lower bounds and with this upper bound that I mentioned before. And then if I translate it, what I get is that P of X minus L will be positive on this S that is contained on a simplex. And then it will be of this type with where, where F of X U is positive on a simplex now. Yeah, so this is the simplex on, on a larger dimension. Now I use my lemma. So I know that putting our holes there, so I can write my F, I can write it in this form. Yeah, and now I, I will replace so if I want to get P, I need to replace X by X plus L in this expression here in blue. So I get that P of X is equal to F of X plus L comma H of X. I replace on this expression. And then what happens is that all these sum of squares that I have here, all these sigmas, when I replace, they just are sum of squares in X. Yeah, because my U is being replaced by H of X and X is being replaced by X plus L. So this is just some sigma, some sum of squares that I call sigma tilde. So each, each sigma, some, some squares become a, a, let's say, more complex sum of squares, but it's still a sum of squares. And then I replace all the terms. And then the only extra terms that I need to, to, to take care of now is uh, this xi plus li and this other linear term. And for that, I will just use the Archimedean property. So because I know that my set satisfies the Archimedean property, then I can write these terms using the Archimedean property as in the quadratic model, and then I can simplify them. Okay, so uh, so the idea of 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 this of the idea is I mean, this is an example, but the idea is to okay now we have a general scheme that we can apply. So if I want to show something about some certificate of negativity for semi-algebraic sets, what I need to do is to write some certificate of negativity on the simplex. Then I can apply the main theorem, and then I, I do some elementary algebra to, to obtain the right form. Yeah. So 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 here we did it for I start with putting it on the simplex and then I get putting it for any single algebra. So, okay. So now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to apply this general scheme in in, in in for different types of certificates for non-negativity on the simplex. But the first question is what are the certificates of non-negativity that we know for the simplex? And and well, one is polya, but I'm not going to do polya yet. So I'm gonna start by building another one. So, so, so that was something that we wanted to do. And then we say, okay, let's try to build a different type of certificate for negativity on the simplex. And then we constructed this semi-sparse certificate. Yeah. 
And the, why, why do we call it semi-sparse? It looks like putting our certificate, so it has SOS. And then, and then I have SOS multiplying the constraints in the simplex that are this constraint and this constraint here. Actually, I don't know if you can see. Marcus, do you see where I'm pointing? No, I didn't see it right now. Could you? Uh, yeah, I see. Okay. Now I see. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm pointing? Yeah, okay. Yes, I yes. see. But it's very small. <laughs> okay. But it's okay. Okay. So I have this SOS here. I have this SOS here. Yeah. And, and, and these SOS are univariate. So in that sense, my certificate is sparse. I still use this M plus one SOS here, but they are univariate. So when I represent them as SDP matrices, they are going to be very small SDP matrices. They are just going to be D by D, where D is the degree, or well, this plus one by D plus one, yeah? And then I have two full SOSs. So these two are multivariate, yeah? The, the row one and the row two. And then this is just something in, in with a non constraint. So, so you can think of this actually, this is just certifying non negativity in certain ball. Yeah. And, and then this is just some of the squares. Full, the rows are full SOS, so multivariate, while these ones, the sigmas, these ones here are univariate. Yeah. And then if, if I, so I had this theorem for the simplex. And then applying our main theorem we get semi sparse certificates of non-negativity for any semi-algebraic set, and it will look basically the same way. So we are going to have univariate uh, uh, SOS multiplying each one of the constraints, and here the constraints are, well, the original constraints, and then I will have lower bounds, x greater or equal than zero, and the upper bound and half is greater or equal than the summation of this. Yeah, so these constraints are all here, they are all multiplied by just univariate constraints. And then I had these two full, full SOS constraints. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the same type of certificate that we got up here. For the simplest, we get it for any semi-algebra set. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's an application. We get this semi-sparse. Semi and then, and then the, let's see, we did some numerical tells for this. So what we did was we created this uh, instance. So these instances, they have uh, n equations of linear equations of two variables. And then we have two uh, polynomials of, of one is linear full polynomials. That's the important part. And then my F is some random objective of degree six. And, and then, and then the, we, we do apply, well, here, there is no sparse certificate because my, my problem is not sparse. My objective is not sparse. And these two constraints here are not sparse, the two bottom constraints. Therefore, therefore we cannot apply a sparse certificate, but we can apply, for example, Putinar. So we can apply Lasser hierarchy. Yeah. And then we apply a semi sparse hierarchy. That will mean we multiply. Remember, being semi sparse means that these are going to be multiplied by univariate polynomial, univariate SOS. Yeah, so there will be a univariate SOS that will be composed by this H and a univariate SOS that will be composed by this two. Yeah. And then we have the, this, this full SOS. Then we did that uh, to compare. And there is no reason why the, why the bound on one on the other should be better just because, uh, well, they, they are really different. Like, like the, the semi sparse certificate, the SOS are smaller but also we are more restricted. So in particular, the bound could be much worse, yeah? Uh, but they actually give us similar bounds. And then, uh, yeah, it's, in some cases, Lazar is better. Uh, in some cases, uh, the semi-sparse is better, but you can see they are very similar. And then in some cases, actually, Lazar didn't run and ours did. And, and that's more easy to see when we compare time, time. So the point is, well, when you do something sparse, it's because you want to work with the smaller objects, yeah? So, so the semi-sparse certificate scales much better. Yeah, so you can see in all these instances, like the big ones with 16 variables, you run out of time in many cases or, or even out of memory. But uh, for the semi-sparse, you, you are still able to run in, in less than, like, than a minute, yeah? So it, it scales much better. And it's because we are using a, a sparse representation. But, but again, the point is of, of this theorem is that we can use an sparse representation, even if the problem is not sparse. I don't use, I don't even explode the sparsity of this. These H are sparse, but we don't exploit that. Yeah. So
so so so so, so even if, if the problem is not sparse at all, we can use this semi-sparse representation where more most of the SOS are sparse. Okay, so is there any question there? Can I ask a quick question, Juan? Yeah, of course. How, how do you choose? So you said you multiply by by univariate sums of squares. Yes. And how how do you choose which x i, which variable you put in the inside the univariate? Oh, the the univariate here is evaluated at h. So my variable is the sigma. So I have an mm -hmm. equation that says sigma of t. Okay. okay. So you yeah you, is okay. so an SOS. But then I, I replace here, and the point is that this whole operation is is uh, is linear, yeah. On on on, yeah. on the right. Okay. Okay. I had missed that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the question. Okay. So 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 yeah. So we can use this this semi sparse certificate, as I said, and and then the, the but again the, the idea is the theorem allows me to I prove something for the simplex, then I, I can apply for in terms of non-negativity, in terms of certification non-negativity, and then I can build this certification non-negativity for any semi algebra set. And then, uh, well, now uh, the next step is, okay, another certificate of non-negativity for the simplex, and that's polya. Well, polya is for the non-negative orthon, but using polya, you can get a certificate of non-negativity for the simplex, and it's this theorem here. And what it says is, well, my polynomial, I can write it in this format, where they see our non-negative coefficients, and then I here I have monomial spills on the axis and on the on the constraint on, on, on n minus e transpose x. Okay, so this is just equivalent to polya. Uh, I don't have a denominator because I'm using it for the simplex. So if, if I were using for the non-negative order, there would be a denominator, but these two they are they are these are just equivalent versions. Okay, and well, if I use this certificate of non-negativity for the simplex. Then by applying the main theory, we get this certificate of negativity for any semi-algebra set. And it's going to be, well, I just had to do all the products of my uh, constraint. So I had to do all the products of my lower bounds, that's the x's, my upper bound on the simplex, that's n minus e transpose x, and my defining constraints. Yeah, so I do these products, yeah, and I use non-negative coefficients. So this is an LP-based uh, certificate on, on non-negativity. Yeah. So so I get an expression that only uses non-negative reals. Um, so this is a, kind of a generalization of the Handelman certificate. And the Handelman certificate was for the case of, of, of uh, here I have only linear uh, constraints. This one is for any semi-algebra. Okay. Now, uh, what is uh, more interesting? Well, because this is a very weak condition asking for, for these constants to be non-negative, we can actually strengthen it. So what we do is we said, well, if I take any class K of polynomials, of non-negative polynomials, and actually I need the non-negative everywhere, but only on the non-negative orthon. So it's a class of copositive polynomials, actually. So if I take any class of copositive polynomials that contains all the non-negative reals, yeah, then I can replace this constant here yeah, this is a larger set, so it will contain in particular all the non-negative reals, because uh, I put it here as a condition. Then I can represent any positive polynomial on this S, I can represent it in this way. Yeah, so if I have a, a, a S, and then I have this lower bounds X greater or equal than zero, upper bound N minus C transpose X, then I can I can represent it in this way. And, and remember that actually this, this, it doesn't have to be this simplex, yeah, it could be, other sets, it's just that I'm presenting it for the simplex, but we get this theory, yeah? And, and, and here, what are interesting classes, K? Well, all those classes that I mentioned before. Um, I just saw a question about the degree bounds. Yes, this, this degree bounds, this D max, uh, it, it will end up being high. Yeah, so, so, so we are working on, on so, so the D max, no, actually, sorry. The D max that I got in the, that we get in the theorem is not high. It's just the maximum between the degree of P and the degree of the H, basically. But when we get it here now, the degree bounds that we get, we get it from the application of polya. Yeah, and polya gets really high degree bounds. So if, if when we compute the degree bounds for this one, that that's some work in progress that we are doing, actually computing degree bounds for all these theorems that I'm showing, yeah, we get high degree bounds for these expressions. 
because they are based on polya. Okay, and and, and then and then the, but the, but then something interesting about this this uh, theorem is that then for I can do it for any k that satisfies this condition, so I can use the SOS, and and then this looks like a smoothen theorem, and also there is I mean approved by Marcus of course about about how to prove this is is similar let's say in, in a spirit but it's different yeah but again it uses the idea of going to the simplex yeah and uh, for for smoothen and, and then actually for the for the sunk uh, it was proven in, in in 2017 and for the sage it was proven in 2019 and those proofs basically follow the steps of marcos uh, proof but here we get it uh, uh, in a very simple and direct way all these cases and we also get uh, for the DSOS, the sd source and the socks and and these three at least they were unknown yeah whether whether such a certificate will be valid uh we also get it for hyperbolic polynomials but the hyperbolic polynomials uh, they contain the sos so it's, it's a it's a clear implication from from the smoothing theorem that it also holds for hyperbolic polynomials yeah and all these classes actually of polynomials they are not negative everywhere so we can actually Put here smaller classes where they only need to be uh, copositive. So, so we, I can replace here with polynomials that are not non-negative everywhere, but just on the non-negative orthon, because I'm only interested because of the way S defined. I'm only interested in non-negative X's. Okay, so so we obtain this theorem that that allow us to. So that's our first application, and then we also did some numerical tests. So here I'm only looking at two examples. Yeah. And then I'm doing different hierarchies using different ideas. These are all re related to sum of squares. So it's the sum of squares, the scale diagonal dominant, the diagonal dominant, yeah? And then different expressions where I use the whole quadratic model, some restriction. And then you can see that they behave differently, yeah? And then what happens, for example, is uh, the uh, Lasser hierarchy will correspond to the circle, this line here. Uh, so, so we get that Lasser hierarchy it converges uh, to the optimum as, 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 as we expect, but because the level of the hierarchy that we have to go up is very is high, it takes a lot of time. So some of these hierarchies, like the solid lines, these ones, these ones are, are cheaper, they are weaker, so I had to go higher in the level, so I had to go to a higher R. But going, going to that higher R, at the end of the day, gives me the optimal value, and it's much cheaper than going to the R value that I need to go in the search hierarchy. But here we have no theory. We just wanted to do these comparisons. And then for these two examples, we saw that, okay, and, and the way we picked these examples, we just picked for something that from somewhere, somewhere in the literature. So we didn't even build these samples. We just said, okay, let's look at what happens here. And then, and then we can see that, okay, it might be worth it studying which hierarchy to use better, best. So, so what I'm saying is this theorem gives me the freedom to pick what, what do I put, what do I want to put here as, as, um, as 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 uh, as a coefficient here, I can pick it and I can do it according to my optimization problem. So, so that's something that I think is very interesting to look what what is going to be better. Yeah, because there is a balance between how big is representing these polynomials versus how high in my degree in my level R do I need to go. Yeah, so that's that's something that is uh, for future work. But uh, okay, so we we get all these hierarchies and and. Um, and then another application actually that follows from 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 this theorem from applying polya is the following. So we have this this proposition about the representation using just non-negative coefficients. As a corollary, we have the following: take any class of polynomials. Yeah. So I have a compact set S, and I take any class of polynomials that satisfies that my H, my defining polynomials, are in the class. And then this class is some is close under sums, products, and multiplication by non-negative scalars. Yeah. And then I need this this other this third property that is the C's Archimedean for degree one's polynomial. So actually it's, it's, I just needed Archimedean for, for the variables. So that means there is some K such that Xi plus or minus K is in like should be here C. So this should be C in the class. Then what I obtain is that all the positive polynomials are in the class. Yeah, so that's that, that's that's the corollary. And and why do we get this corollary? Well, because 
because if, C, if, if these three items are satisfied, then C contains all the expressions of this form. And therefore, it contains all the positive polynomials on S. Okay, so the proof is just one line. And, uh, and uh, please, please, question. Um, may, may I uh, ask a question? Yeah, of course. So if it's Archimedean for degree one polynomials, uh, isn't it when Archimedean for all polynomials? I mean, uh, yes, it's because, under, so, because it's closed under some products. Yes. So because of two, it will be also Archimedean. Yeah, okay. But the thanks. point is, you, we wanted to write it in this way because you only need to test for degree one. Yes, okay. So in, in the original version, we put Archimedean, but that, that sounded like too strong, but yeah, but it's equivalent because, because we have two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then, and then, and then, and then the, 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 but the point is that using this theorem, we can prove several classical theorems like Krivin, Handelmans, and Smudgen. And, 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 and then, for example, if you do Krivin, then the, the C that you use is this set here. Yeah. This is our C. So you will use this one. This is the one that you want to show that contains all the positive polynomials. And then one, well, by const, oh, I, I, I noticed that I put here G, it should be H. Then one, by construction, one holds, all the H are contains, and two also holds. Yeah, this is, this is just, it's close under some plus and multiplications by non-negative scalar. So by definition of C, one and two hold, and then we just need to show the Archimedean by degree one polynomial, yeah? And actually, in this case, the, the, the proof, actually, to prove that it's Archimedean is, is just some is induction and some elementary algebra, yeah, that this, that this object is Archimedean. And, and, and uh, but for example, uh, to prove Handelman, you also get that one and two trivially follow. And to prove that it's Archimedean for degree one polynomials, that's actually Farkas Lemma. Yeah, so Farkas Lemma tells us that, that the object that you build when you, the, the, the set of, of certificates that you build when, when doing Handelman is Archimedean. And, and for Smugent, well, we use, uh, there is Bear, Bear Lemma, and, 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 then, and then you need that, yeah? And so you need to prove that is, that is Archimedean, that the pre-order is Archimedean. But proving one and two is it's usually straightforward. So, so actually, I, I have a question here, if you don't have questions. And probably one of you know, suppose I know I have all the properties except close under multiplication. Will it follow that then it's close under multiplication? You, you, you mean close under products? Uh... Close under products, sorry, yeah, close yes. under products. Yes. And it's Archimedean, not just for degree one, but Archimedean. So, for example, the quadratic model, I know that it's Archimedean and it's close under sum and close under non-negative scalars. Then, do I know that the quadratic model is, is well, I know that the quadratic model is close under pearls, but can I, can I prove? Okay, it's not, at least it's not trivia because I've been looking for it. I tried to prove it and I, I failed. And then, and then we, we had been working on, 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 because for example, if I wanted to, to, to prove putting our theorem using this corollary, yeah, then I, I will need to show that the quadratic model is closed under multiplication. But, but we want to, we want to do it in, I mean, we have an Archimedean quadratic model and we want to show that it's closed under multiplication. Putting our, pro, putting our theorem, putting our theorem implies that it's closed under multiplication, but we want to get around that. Okay. Okay, but, but this corollary basically uh, somehow assumes this, uh, uh, um, let's say, classical results. And, and also, well, we, we are looking also into, into applications in, in different classes of, of, of uh, certificates, but we like the fact that it's more asymmetric. Like we just need to say, okay, what are the, pro the properties that you, that you preserve or that you use? Okay. So um, now I'm gonna prove the, the main result. Yes, and, and I was planning to write, but I think it's going to be impossible because my pen is not working. Uh, and, 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 and then the, the, well, the proof is four lines. So I will, I will, I will go over the lines. And then, well, we, we have depart from, from the polynomial is positive. Yeah. And therefore this is, this is kind of, it's, it's kind of a couple of tricks. 
So the first thing is to say, well, if my polynomial is positive on S, then it's, it, my polynomial is positive on this set. Yeah? <clears throat> and, and why is that? That is because when I look at the set of Xs in this set, yeah, so when I take the projection into, into the, the X variables, what I get is S. And, and my polynomial P depends only on the X variables. Yeah? So, so my polynomial being positive on S is equivalent to saying actually that my polynomial is positive on this set. Yeah? Because of the assumptions that we have on S, of, of S being contained in, in this, uh, I mean, on, on, on the simplex. And then, and then if it is positive here, so, so basically what we are doing is we are doing a, a trick that, that, that we learn in, in, in optimization that is to add slack variables. So the only thing that we are doing is we are adding these slack variables. Yeah, they are not negative because they are here in this simplex. And then my, my inequalities got converted into equalities. And then if I have only equalities, now I can apply this uh, theorem that I mentioned for equalities. Yeah, so I will get a, a, a polynomial that is non negative on this simplex, that's my f, f of x, s, and, and some other polynomial. This, this is an unrestricted polynomial here that multiplied by this uh, uh, sum of squares here, of, of some of these squares, I should say better, uh, is equal to p. So I can represent p in this way, and this is because of this equality theorem. And then, and then, and then once I evaluate or I replace SI by HI, the, all these terms cancel. Yeah, so, so if I do the replacement SI equal HI, this part cancels, and then I just get F of X H. So, so I get that P can be written in this way. Okay, so any question here? Okay, so, so, so as I said, the, the proof is, is pretty simple. It took us some time actually to realize it, but, uh, but uh, at least for the compact case. Okay, and, and, um, and this F, and, and this relates to, to, to the question of Marcus again at the beginning, how can I construct this F? Well, the F here is, is from, from the qualities, from the theorem for equalities, and there we show that it exists by using arguments on compactity. So it's really a proof about epsilons and deltas, um, but we don't, we don't, uh, I mean, we don't construct F, it's, it's not constructive. Uh, right now we are working in actually uh, constructing bounds on the degree of F. So in an original paper, we don't give, a, give any uh, degree bound on F, but using results of type of Lokashevich results, one can build degree bounds for this F, and therefore one can get degree bounds for for, for this theorem, for the theorem of inequalities. Uh, okay. And then uh, ex the, the, excuse me? Yeah. Uh, I, but but I, I mean, you, you write that F has degree and most 2D max, no? Yes. So you have good degree bounds, very good degree bounds on F, no? Oh, yeah, sorry. I always get confused with the construction of the degree bounds when we apply the theorems. No, no, sorry. Yeah, we bound the degree of F. What, what, I, what, I need, what, I, what we don't bound here is how... how Bigger than zero, it is. So, so, so that's, that's, that was the problem in the proof that we needed to to have some epsilon here to be to complete mm -hmm. the degree bounds. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and then and then the the we have a theorem for the for the unbounded case. So now now we don't have any any assumption on compactness of S, but we have to add this extra assumption here. And it's, uh, it's about points in infinity. So we look at given a polynomial P, we take the term of largest degree. So notice that here I, I write all the terms and here I just put equal to the degree. So I, this is the part of maximum degree of P. And then S tilde is just, I do the same for each H. Notice that S tilde is, is homogeneous. Yeah, and P is also homogeneous. Yeah, and, and then, and then, and then, for the theorem, we need two things. We need that P is positive on S, but then this homogeneous part is also positive on, on, on the homogeneous uh, uh, part of S, yeah? Then that will imply a similar theorem, but we just need to add a denominator. But notice that this denominator, we know the degree. So again, we had the same degree bound for F, 
and we have the degree. And 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 the and then these variables y and z they are they are well this is this is the non-negative order. Yeah. So this is also a trick that one does in, in optimization. That is, if you have a, a an unrestricted variable, you write it as y minus z, where y and z are both non-negative. So we do that to restrict our problem to the non-negative orton, and then we apply this theorem for the non-negative orton, where you only need to put one variable. Yeah. So we get this. And then this f is, is going to be non-negative on the whole non-negative orton. So for example, you can apply polya to obtain certificates uh, for, for applying polya, then you obtain certificates for this case. Yeah. So again, you will obtain uh, certificates of, of the polya type for any semi-algebraic set. So you can kind of, we can basically repeat many of the results that are here. It gets a little bit more complicated because of this assumption. Yeah, and because it becomes more technical, of course. And, and uh, this assumption here actually has appeared before. So in Ni uh, and, and Google all, so it has appeared in other papers related to other kind of properties. Uh, there is called closeness at infinity, also in some paper that we were working before, yeah? And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more uh, analysis type of assumption. So, so again, I, I would like to, to know whether this has some meaning in, in algebraic geometry and, and, and I'm not much knowledgeable of algebraic geometry. Uh, uh, so, 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 so this is more like an analysis type. So in that sense, also, this is more analysis based. And, and is, is this S, for example, this S tilde is, is really like a recession cone. So if, if this was linear inequalities, then this will be just, if my H are linear, this is just a recession cone of, of the given polytope. So that's also, that is also, well understood from the point of view of optimization. Okay, and and um, yeah, and then this assumption here uh, is known to to hold generically. So Nisho uh, in 2013 that this assumption holds generically. So this theorem will will hold generically in in, in any in, in I mean in, in on semi algebra sets S. Yeah, yes. but of course we also have some court examples where it doesn't hold because it's just generally clearly it's not for all semi algebra. Okay. And um, well, actually, I, I have plenty of time for questions. So, yeah. So, so, so again, our approach is to reduce non-negativity for compass and algebraic sets to non-negativity on the simplex, or for general semi-algebraic sets and bounded to non-negativity on, on, on the non-negativity orton. And then, in that way, one of the things is is because we go to the simplex and then we get these uh, non-negativity reals. We don't really use sum over squares. We just use, we can use any class of non-negative po uh, polynomials. So, so, so we can use new classes of polynomials to show, to show non-negativity on, on the simplex. And it's related to all these classes of, of, of non-negative polynomials. Yeah. And, and then the current work is, as I said, we are working on the degree bounds, so getting degree bounds for all these results. Also, this is very close related to duality. That's something that I didn't show. But, but there is a way to, to what, what we are doing when we build this, when we build this certification on negativity is, is we are really working on the, on the dual problem of the optimization problems. And then here we are connecting non-negative certificates for a semi algebraic set, so for a general polynomial optimization problem with non-negativity of certificates over the simplex. So that means we are saying something about the dual of these problems. Yeah, so we, we are able to show, for example, a strong duality in a very general class of polynomial optimization problems that's current work also. And uh, we are uh, also working on, on obtaining fully sparse certificates. So we can recover uh, the, 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 the sparse certificates of LACER for, for SOS base sparse certificates uh, by doing some tricks. But also right now with one of my students, we are working on obtaining actually sparse certificates based not only on SOS, but on Song or Sage or, or maybe this source. So on, in this or on, our, in, on these other classes. And of course, we are looking into numerical applications. So right now, it's kind of this became a big project, and then we are working on, on this on all these implications. Okay, and well, and that's it. So so I think we have time for questions. <laughs>